Anyone who isn't up to speed in the car world would tell you that cars as an investment are a terrible idea. And for the most part, you're goddamn right. Cars are depreciating assets. And essentially, if you buy new, you can lose a ton of money in the first few years. Unless you play it smart to begin with and you watch the car market like some people watch the stock market. Believe it or not, it's actually easier than you think. But you have to be very careful and make sure you make the right moves. But we put together a little cheat sheet for you because we made a list of seven of our favorite cheap sports cars that you can drive for free. And essentially, you can use them for a year or two, take them to the track, drive them to work, heck, even meet some of the best friends you haven't even even met yet. And then when you sell it, you get most, if not all your money back. Yeah, it is possible, but you have to do it with the right ideal car. And if you're new here, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. So buckle up, let's go. First up is a car from Lexus that for some reason never was really all that popular. And in the sports car market, it was the total underdog that we now look back on with really good vibes. And the ISF is a rare breed of cars. From the era when more than just one manufacturer decided it was a smart idea to stuff a big meaty V8 into a compact sports sedan. And the result was a refined sport muscle car, if you will. See, Lexus took a five liter V8, codenamed the 2UR, put it into its popular sexy IS sedan. And the result was almost 420 horsepower sent right to the rear wheels. And this car competed with the E90 M3 with its fiery S65 V8 and a car that I actually owned using the ideal car strategies, as well as the first generation of Mercedes C63. And you can never forget the B7 Audi RS4 that has pretty much the same V8 as the Audi R8. But what the ISF offered over all of these other vehicles is reliability. And that even proves to be the case today because these things are getting more than 10 years old. And when you put the Lexus ISF up against its competition, it's gonna be the easiest on the checkbook. All it's really gonna ask you is for fluids, tires, and brakes. And regular maintenance is gonna keep it on the road for a long time. And if we pop over to Auto Tempest without looking real hard, you can find a few for roughly 25,000 bucks. And yes, this one has 76,000 miles on it. This one has 108,000. But overall, this isn't gonna cost that much more to keep on the road than just a regular IS300. And heck, it's a Lexus, so mileage really doesn't matter all that much. And guys, linked in the description and the first comment, I put my ideal picks to Auto Tempest, so go check them out because next up is another sedan with a V8. But this one is from another era. This is a BMW M5. And at its time, the BMW M5 was actually the fastest sedan in the world. And believe it or not, it was also the car that celebrity Alex Roy used in the Cannonball record run. Yes, this tried and true platform was the car that set the Guinness world record for the fastest time to go across the United States. And it makes sense with a four liter V8 and 400 horsepower to the back wheels and the fact that you could get this with any transmission as you wanted, as long as it was a slick shift and six speed manual, which, well, helps save the manuals by getting this ideal T. It totally makes sense why the E39 M5 is going up hard in value. And pre-facelift examples with 100 to 150,000 miles are going for 15 to $20,000. And I bet that they will not stay there for long. These things were instant classics and people are really appreciating them now. Whew, I really like this one. And the one awesome thing about BMW is that it has a huge aftermarket with a ton of good independent shops if you need to get it worked on. Because let's face it, it's not cheap to get your old BMW repaired at the dealer. But if you have a good Indy, well then it can be very reasonable to keep on the road. And the E39 delivers a driving experience that no current sports sedan does, especially since it has that tried and true manual transmission. I guess the word to describe it would be traditional in the best sense of the word, which this next vehicle caters to a slightly different crowd. It's newer, it's got a six in it instead of an eight, and it comes from Japan. You know what I'm talking about? Well, one more clue. It's the twin of the Infiniti G35, which is extremely popular as well. And Nissan Z car is sitting steady on the used market right now. The two seat rear wheel drive 350 came in either a coupe or roadster form. And with that screaming 3.5 liter VQ series V6 that believe it or not, Nissan still uses to this day, they end up using their stuff forever. But I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? You gotta hold on tight. I'm holding. 
because the Z car puts out power in the 300 range. And it was built from around 2003 until the 370Z came out in 2008. And they made enough of them to be seriously popular. And while yes, it is slightly on the pudgy side from a weights perspective, the balance this platform has more than makes up for it. It is a seriously engaging track car. And while some years with the rev up engine had to deal with oil consumption issues, the 350 was pretty much bulletproof. And yes, the bottom of the barrel 350Zs you can find for roughly 5,000 bucks, but we suggest finding one for under 10 grand and you are going to have a solid platform for whatever you wanna do with the 350Z. But if you wanna double your budget, for under 20 grand, you can find a very nice Nismo, which this one that just sold on Bring a Trailer for 20,750 bucks is absolutely stunning and definitely a vehicle you can follow in the ideal car strategies and one that you can drive for free or even make money enjoying. And what's awesome about those Nismo models is that they're available with unique suspension and a bunch of track goodies. And they really are so good from the factory that you don't really have to do any modifications to them because they are already such an all around great performer, which is a lot like the next vehicle on this list, because how could we not have a Porsche on it? And I don't know about you, but I think that every enthusiast should own a P car at some point in their enthusiast lifetime. And yes, a lot of us grew up lusting after those air-cooled 911s, and they all have that timeless styling. And when Porsche introduced the Boxster all the way back in 1996, they really had one goal, to bring a smaller, more affordable alternative for those who couldn't quite swing a Porsche 911 at the time. Now though, the Boxster is one of those cars that's looked at a little bit differently. It got rid of the poor man's Porsche stigma a while back. And it's now considered a legitimate mid-engine sports car with its power sent to the correct wheels. Now, there is one main issue with these, the IMS bearing, which can require some serious dough if it hasn't been addressed yet. And in fact, my 996C4S, which I recently just bought, had the IMS issue and, well, it got a full new four liter engine in it, which luckily, I didn't have to pay for it, the previous owner did, and I bought the car, including the new engine, for less than he paid just to have the engine rebuilt. Luckily, there's a simple and relatively inexpensive fix for the IMS issue. And most enthusiasts by now, since the Boxster is getting a little bit older, have addressed this issue. And really, those are the ones to buy, or if the IMS issue hasn't been done yet, it's something to negotiate into the purchase price and get it done right away for peace of mind. And guys, I can't begin to tell you how awesome of a value these first generation Boxsters are with the IMS, RMS issue taken care of. You can get them for under five grand, but really under 10 grand again is where you're looking for the most bang for buck. And that will get you a clean Boxster nowadays. And because so many of these were sold, what I would suggest is that you go for the Boxster S because it has the bigger engine, more power, a six speed manual transmission, and a little bit better suspension and brakes. This one right here, I would definitely be interested in using the Ideal Car Strategies on. And this thing would be an absolute ball of fun. So yeah, it's pretty crazy that you can get a Boxster S now, which I've driven the base and the S, and I have to say that the S is definitely worth the premium. But if you have a little bit more dough in your pocket and you want something from the US, there's something out there called a Corvette, specifically the C6 Z06 that Squid affectionately calls the big bad Miata because this thing brings serious track day power to you on a budget, but it kind of handles like a Miata. And no, it's not as cheap as an early Boxster or even a decent Miata, but it is totally easy to find a nice Z06 for roughly 25,000 bucks. And guys, here's a couple first year C6 Z06s for 25 grand and 26,995. Both have a roughly 100,000 miles on them. And honestly, that is an incredible value for what you get, 505 horsepower, it looks as fast as it actually is. And this one in yellow, come on, let's go. Yeah, 25 grand, it's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money when you consider that you get a seven liter V8, which is naturally aspirated. And like I said before, 505 horsepower. Yeah, that is so much power. 
and the fact it only comes with the manual transmission makes this a serious car. And when you show up in it, people know you came prepared. And the thing that most people don't know is that these vehicles are really quite reliable. Heck, the body is made out of fiberglass, so it's not gonna rot. And the fact that this rocket ship was bought up by all those boomers wearing New Balance is brand new, you know, the guys that go down to Florida in the winters and parade these cars to the car show or the grocery store every once in a while, for the most part, they haven't been used hard and put away wet. And to top it all off, the Z06 will realistically see over 20 miles to the gallon on the freeway. That is, if you go easy on it. And the Corvette might just have the most horsepower that you can get in this price range. And with the added reliability and the C8 doing away with the manual transmission, these things, especially good ones, are not going to depreciate. And if you think about it for a second, any older vehicle with huge horsepower numbers and a cult following has the tried and true recipe of defeating depreciation. And the VET has all of those qualities, and so it's the perfect ideal vehicle for you if you wanna go enjoy a couple of track days, carve up a couple canyons, and then sell it in a year or two without losing any money on it. And before you go out and buy a C6 Z06, it's time to skip back across the pond and look at a two-seater convertible. Because this little guy, well, it's forced induced. And yes, there are literally millions of Miatas on the used market, and they're all in various states of disrepair. But not the Mazda Speed. See, this is the only Miata that Mazda sold with a turbo. Yeah, they bolted a small snail on the regular MX-5 engine. And while yes, I agree, it's not as insane as the ones that are put out by our friends at Flying Miata, which those are so badass, the Mazda Speed Miata is still desirable and not likely to lose any value over the next couple of years. And here's the thing, the Mazda Speed version was only sold from 2004 to 2005. And believe it or not, their factory actually had a fire in 2005, and so just over 5,000 units made it out alive. And so there are a lot less Mazda speeds on the road than Mazda had intended. And this little go-kart really makes you realize why Miata is always the answer. You hit zero to 60 in 6.7 seconds, which is good, but not great. And if you're buying a Miata for speed, well, you shouldn't be. Because the magic is really into the upgraded suspension, specifically the better Bilstein shocks. Plus, you got bigger tires and 17-inch racing heart wheels. And prices on these guys have hit the depreciation floor. And luckily, most of them were bought by older enthusiasts who wanted to step up from their regular Miatas. And as you can see here, here's one for $9,999 that sold on Bring a Trailer. And you better jump on these quick because they are only going up in value. This was a screaming deal. And in the next year or two, you're going to wish you could buy one for roughly 10 grand. And when I was browsing Auto Tempest, there were a lot of clean, well cared for examples with mature owners. So I know this video is probably gonna drive the prices of all these vehicles up just a tad. And I would definitely look hard at this Mazda Speed Miata. In fact, uh, give me a minute. I might, I might actually uh, inquire on one right now. Okay, so just sent out an email and let's talk about the next vehicle on this list that you could drive for free or make money enjoying. And believe it or not, this is actually also a Mazda that uh, you could get for cheap, like cheaper than the Mazda Speed. And yes, the RX-7 was a tall task to follow. And when Mazda came out with the RX-8, it wasn't, uh, well, super well received but I'm starting to see people come around for the RX-8. It's turning a corner, and it's definitely one of the most unique cars at any price point. And it's mainly due to that proprietary engine that has some serious character. I mean, there are very few engines that you can drive on the road every single day that rev to 9,000 RPM and row your own gears with it. It is absolutely great to drive when it runs. And that little 1.3 liter rotary is a fun little unit and looking for these cars, well, you can find them for less than $5,000 all day long. As you can see, under five grand, there are quite a few unit units. And the thing is, you gotta make sure you get a pre-purchase inspection on these because, well, they can hide a ton of gremlins if you're not careful. So definitely get a pre-purchase inspection, but for under five grand, this thing, punches way above its weight. And that's because it is a serious Grand Tourer with excellent highway manners and sweet steering response. And yes, let's address that one problem because, well, it's the elephant in the room. They drink gas and oil like nobody's business. But the thing is, I think people are starting to realize that the RX-8 is one incredible car to own 
if you do your research and you take care of it. Heck, I have a friend that has one that's put over 150,000 miles on it without really any issues. And the value on these guys has really bottomed out as well because mint cars are going for roughly 10,000 bucks. So grab one while you can, enjoy it and sell it for the same amount as you paid for it in a year or so. So these seven sports cars are just the tip of the iceberg of cars that you can drive for free or even make money enjoying. And as time is going by, legends from the early 2000s are sitting pretty Pretty steady at the bottom of their value with a lot of popular models starting to creep up. So if you've been toying with the idea of buying your dream track toy, then this is probably the time to do it. And so what car or truck or SUV did we miss? Let us know with a comment below. And if you enjoyed the vid, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new here, this is Ideal. Please subscribe and turn on that notification bell and keep driving Ideal cars and keep living the Ideal lifestyle.